The struggle for independence was seen by many as a worthy struggle aimed at the liberation of the African continent from the clutches of colonialism. The struggle was beheaded by some notable young Africans in their respective countries of origin. The struggle eventually succeeded and the leaders of the independence movement became the first indigenous leaders of their countries. They were celebrated and elevated to heroic positions among their people. But this new set of leaders all suffered from one virus. They were not ready to leave power or allow for succession. They became sit-tight leaders. They fell in love with power and stayed on almost forever. Hastings Banda was one of such leaders in Africa. He became prime minister and later became president in 1964 and stayed on in office without break until 1994 when he was forced out of power by the power of the people freely expressed in a keenly contested election. In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the history of Malawi's first prime minister and first president, President Hastings Kamuzu Banda. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Hastings Banda is said to have been born in 1898. He was trained at home and also trained abroad. In 1931, he earned a bachelor's degree in history from the University of Chicago in the United States. He later studied medicine at Meharry Medical College in Tennessee, from where he obtained a degree in medicine in 1937. Banda thus became the second Malawian person to receive a medical degree after Daniel Malekebo. He later moved from the United States to the United Kingdom, where he enrolled to also qualify as a medical doctor there. He eventually qualified and was given the license to practice medicine. He practiced for some years and later returned to his home country to take active part in politics. Shortly after his arrival, he started speaking against colonialism and began to advocate for independence. He insisted that Britain should leave and hand over their country to the natives for self-governance. He galvanized the support of his people and continued in the agitation for independence. Eventually, in July 1964, independence was granted and Banda became the first prime minister of the new country. Two years later, he proclaimed Malawi a republic with himself as the first president. He consolidated power and took full charge of the country. He formed his cabinet and apportioned portfolios to his ministers. He changed the name of the country from Nyasaland to Malawi, a name which the country is still known till today. He quickly expanded secondary education, reformed native courts, ended certain colonial agricultural tariffs, and made other reforms in the new country. He supported women's rights and improved the country's infrastructure to a very remarkable extent. Like most other African leaders at the time, Banda declared Malawi a one-party state under the Malawi Congress Party, MCP. This was criticized by many pro-democracy figures, but Banda went on with his decision. His mission was to use the one-party system and perpetuate himself in power, and this mission was achieved with ease. In 1970, the leadership of Malawi Congress Party met Hastings Banda, the party's president, for life. In 1971, the title was extended to make him Malawi's president for life. Expectedly, this did not go down well with many people, but there was nothing they could do. Hastings was a no-nonsense leader. He went on and remained in power for years upon years. Hastings had no room for opposition or dissenting voices. The country went on with Hastings as the president and political leader. 
His regime was criticized for being high-handed and intolerant to opposition. Hastings' human rights records were poor. In April 1992, Chukufwa Chihana, a labor unionist, openly called for a national referendum on the political future of Malawi. Banda was offended by this call and thus ordered for his arrest and he was arrested even before he finished his speech at Lilongwe International Airport. By 1993, amidst increasing domestic and international pressure, Banda agreed to hold a referendum which ended the one-party system in Malawi. The referendum was held on 14th June 1993, resulting in an overwhelming vote in favor of multi-party democracy. After these, political parties besides the MCP were formed and preparation for the general election began in earnest. Banda's greatest weapon, namely one-party system for Malawi, had been broken and with the introduction of multi-party system, Banda was exposed to stiff competition and possible defeat in any contest. Soon afterwards, a special assembly ended his lifetime presidency and stripped him of most of his powers. By this time, things had begun to change in Malawi and Banda's strength had started failing. He was no more the tiger he used to be and could not really hold on to his decisions and policies as strongly as he used to do. Banda gauged the political temperature of the country and had no option than to work with the newly formed political parties and with the church, which was a very powerful force to reckon with. In the next round of election in 1994, Banda participated but was roundly defeated. He was roundly defeated by Bikili Muluzi. This was the first ever democratic election in Malawi. Banda quickly considered defeat and said as follows on state radio, quote, I wish to congratulate Muluzi wholeheartedly and offer him my full support and cooperation. End of quote. This marked the end of an era in the politics of Malawi. The 30 year old unbroken rule of Hastings Banda had come to an end through the determination of his people expressed boldly in a general election. There was transition for the first time in three decades, and the transition was peaceful to the admiration of many. In 1995, Banda was arrested and charged with the murder 10 years previously of former cabinet colleagues. He was, however, acquitted due to lack of evidence. Banda lived on for a few more years and was aging the more by the years. On 25th November 1997, he died of respiratory failure in Garden City Clinic in Johannesburg in South Africa. The hospital recorded that he was 99 years old at the time of his death, though other sources have recorded that he was less than 99. Banda's personal life was shrouded with secrecy, and at the time of his death, he had no known biological son or daughter, though it was rumored that he had a son with an American lady who once worked as a receptionist in his clinic and got impregnated by Banda in the course of her employment. Banda had never acknowledged this story as true throughout his lifetime. His estate and the vast fortune therein was thus inherited by family members. Dr. Hastings Kamuzu Banda was a prominent figure in the politics of Malawi. He was loved by many and also hated by many. But in all, the history of Malawi cannot be complete without the mention of his name. He remains in the history books as the first Prime Minister of Malawi and the first President of the country who fought doggedly for independence but who went on to rule for an unbroken period of 30 years. 
Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video. <music>